welcome back to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. Probably the same day my hair actually looks how I want it to. Anyway, uh, <laughs> if you have seen the thumbnail, which I'm assuming you have because you clicked on the film, unless you're playing a playlist. Anyhow, uh, the thumbnail, the title, and if you have read any of it, the description, I will tell you this is a new series on my channel, and it's the, I know I anti hold it, but, and the first item on my, when I first saw it advertised, I'm like, who's going to want that? But then got more intrigued and ended up picking it up second hand because I wanted to try it out. Is Naked Honey. So, if you want to find out exactly how I achieved this look, and whether I was right to anti-haul it or whether it'll be staying in my collection for a while and then my friend you are in precisely the right place grab a drink grab a snack put your feet up and enjoy here it comes. Hey, welcome back from the intro. Uh, it's a Sunday evening. Hubby, you'll probably hear him moving around in the background because he's getting ready to go down to his man cave. Woo! So I thought it was a ghost. <sighs> oh. Hubby. Hello. Right, he's going to be darting in and out because he's going to run power down to the man cave and stuff. So if you hear stuff in the background, it's probably going to be him. I'm a bit excited. Okay, now I will have I will have admitted this in the intro that I've not filmed yet. But um, when this palette first came out, I really wasn't impressed. I'm like, really? It was just after the... Um, it was round about the same time that Colourpop released their Uh Huh Honey palette. And then Urban Decay released <coughs> this. And from the promo pictures I'd seen, I wasn't very impressed. I'm like, that looks boring as hell. And then I started to watch a few reviews on it, and I'm like, I don't know, maybe, maybe, maybe it's, you know. And then Teresa is dead, got her hands on it. I swear that woman could sell ice to Eskimos because... She's very much alive. <sighs> Just an observation. <laughs> As you can see, I picked one up from Depop. Uh, thankfully, barely touched and... This is the first time I've actually had one of the Urban Decay brushes. The brush says uh, um, Naked Honey on it, but it's kind of almost semi-opaque, <coughs> rather than being fully opaque. It's, it's interesting. I might give this brush a try, see what it's like. So, yeah, basically, this is my I know I anti hauled it, but series. Ah, cobweb. <laughs> we have a friendly little spider that lives on our back door and it catches all the moths that come in and out. And every so often, Hubby ruins her house by walking Sorry. into her cobweb. It's in a really bad place. <laughs> it's catching moths as they come in, which I don't like. Thank you. See, it's your fault for being too tall. 
Because I can walk through there. I'm just going to stop growing. <laughs> oh, stop. there's a joke there and it's Sunday evening, but this is going out during the day, so I'm going to be good. Right. Um, God knows how long this film's going to be. I'm going to have to do a lot of editing, I think. Right. This is still a teaching channel. Uh, with my chronic pain, I can't blend as quickly as I would like. Uh, that combined with the fact that I want everyone to be able to keep up with me means that I go at a more sedate pace when it comes to blending. If you are more experienced, uh, then there's a speed widget up there. Please feel free to use it. doesn't worry me at all. Um, but I want people who've never picked up a brush before to be able to follow this tutorial. Face is washed, moisturised. I've not SPF'd because it's evening and I'm not going to go outside anyway and it's moonlight, not sunlight. But it is primed. Um, well, I've been in a lot of pain recently. Uh, I have got a few stress visitors popping up, which, because they were showing up so violently right on camera, and do you think I can find my green colour corrector? So I have bunged a little bit of concealer on them. Let's get you zoomed in. I'm going to talk you through the difference between deep set eyes and hooded lids because they are two very different types of eyes and the way that you apply makeup is different for both of them. That's better. There we go. Um, if you're one of my regular viewers and you've seen this a lot, feel free to fast forward until I wave this brush at you with a bit of colour on it. Um, right, I've got deep set eyes, they're sometimes referred to as double lidded eyes and a lot of people with eyes like mine are under the impression or are mistakenly informed they have hooded lids. Now I'm going to talk you through the differences between those two lid styles and I'm going to give you a workaround when hubby has finished rustling at the other end of the kitchen. Don't call the sheriff, I'm rustling. I will give you a workaround for each oh, eye shape so that... Mind her cobweb! I'm sorry, I only brushed it. I'll give you a workaround for each eye shape so that you can follow any tutorial. See, this is why I normally film when he's not in the room. Mm. Should have waited ten minutes until it was done. Right. When I relax my brows and look straight ahead, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if your static upper lid completely covers right down to the lash line part or all of your mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. Now I'm going to explain to you deep set eyes. I'll demo with this eye because it's the one I'm blinding so I can make sure I'm still on screen and in focus. Right, If I cover the visible mobile lid and close that eye you can see I've got as much lid if not a bit more, that tucks back away out of sight. And if I cover the static lid and do the same, you can see I've got lid space above the crease that goes back in as well. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that gives me the same issues that people with hooded lids get. So we get transference of colours onto the upper lid. If we're cutting our crease, we have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And with glitters, even when we use glitter glue, we'll get a bare patch right through the middle there. So, the workarounds. If you have hooded lids, get a brush like this or a pencil brush and sketch out a new crease line on your static lid. Obviously that's going to reduce the space between your new crease and your brow. So just use slightly smaller blending brushes and if necessary go right up to the brow without leaving a gap. If however you have deep set eyes what we have to do when we're putting the colour through our crease 
is every so often just relax our eyes and make sure we brought it up high enough that you can still see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different ways of working through two different but similar lid issues. Right. Uh, I'm going to start off by going into, I think, um, I'm going to use the fluffier end of this brush. And I'm going to go into, let's try sweet. This is the, the lightest colour that isn't a cream. This is the one thing I don't like about these long skinny pans, is actually fitting the brush in them and feeling like I'm actually getting enough pigment onto the brush itself. Okay, if you're fast forwarding, now's the time to stop. Hello. Right. So I'm going to start off over here. I'm holding the brush right at the end, so I put as little pressure on my eyelid as possible. And I'm going to start off just with little circular movements. And slowly build this pigment up. It is, as I said, the lightest one there that isn't a cream colour. So I was expecting to have to work to get it to show. I do struggle here and here on both eyes with dry patches. So again, I'm just gonna I'm doing circulars movements in this direction going towards the nose, a bit of a bounce and then reversing the direction to come back out again. Okay, I don't like this brush. So I'm going to grab uh, one of my Rolling Lanical Chic Bro crease brushes which is a circular loosely packed blender. I don't understand why they put a brush in there which isn't necessarily the best brush to use with the formulas they have in the palette. Might zoom you out just a fraction just so that we can see both eyes at once. That's a little bit too far in it. That's better. Yes, yeah, so um, this is a, a new series on my channel because I'll be honest, there's a couple of palettes I've picked up from Depop. Do you see how easier that was to apply with this brush than it was over here? How much quicker that colour laid down. Honestly, if you're having problems with a pigment, try a different brush because a lot of the times it can be that the brush doesn't like pigment that you're using. Look, that, that just went on in no time flat and you saw how long it took me this side. Just relaxing and just checking that both sides look the same because obviously I'm not James Charles, I don't photoshop everything to hell and back afterwards. But then if someone built his career on a lie, how can you trust any look that he does and claims to not be? No, stop it and you're getting bitchy. Yeah, I've, there's, there's quite a few palettes that I'd said, oh, I'm not going to get that, don't need it, it's too similar to something else I've got, or it doesn't interest me. And then, um, <clears throat> well, you know, shit happened, and I ended up buying it. Right, I've got a clean washcloth here that I'm going to use for cleaning the brush off with. I much prefer using this than a colour switch. It's much, much more gentle on your bristles, especially if you're using natural head brushes. These are synthetic, um, but I wouldn't use a colour switch on any of my brushes now. They're, they're far too harsh. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to follow up from that by going into Hive which is mid-tone but it's a it's a cooler they've got sort of half the palette is warm toned and half the palette is cool toned and my white balance has gone very weird I think that's better and I'm going to pop this one just a little bit lower down on the eye 
same thing though, circular movements just to blend it out. Yes, yeah, so this is a new series. I'm, 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 I'm going to have two new series on my channel. I've got this one, which is the I Know I Ain't I Hold It But. And I'm also going to be starting one called Pain Somnia Purchases. Because you would not believe the number of times that something turns up and I'm thinking, I don't remember ordering this. And then I look back through my emails and see that I've ordered it at something like, you know, stupid o'clock in the morning, half past two in the morning or quarter to four or something. And um, my Pain Somnia Purchases. Now, see, this is what I was worried about with this palette. These do not look different enough on the eye. I'm really glad that I got this and didn't pay full price. Got it second hand off of Depop. Because initially when you apply it, you can really see the difference. Can you see how it's clinging to these dry patches at the side here though? I'm trying to get that to blend out. There's, uh, Not a lot of fun, I've got to be honest. That's hubby again, in case you can hear him in the background. Right, we're going to go into Keeper. And just try blending between those two colours. And just see if I can get a more... Seamless blend there between the two. I mean, this will be a great palette for you know sort of work because it it really is neutral. It's <laughs> couldn't get much more neutral if it tried really. Um, I mean, I'm guessing you can get quite dramatic looks out of it if you build it up using the one deep shade in it called Sting in his fields of gold. Um, I mean, these are blending okay, as in, yeah, you know, I did have that issue with that cooler toned one sticking to the dry patches, but. It is now blending out. Darling, you sneak like a villain in Scooby-Doo. Yeah, that's how I learned to sneak. You raise your knees and put your hands up and make yourself as conspicuous as possible. Works better when you don't have Blakey's on the bottom of your shoes, though. Yeah, they're not my sneaky shoes. Mm-mm. Uh -uh. Love you. Love you. Uh, I need my charger lube. Char, char, charger lube. Love you, dear. Okay. <coughs> how, do, what does, how does Craig Revel Hall power his phone? With his char, char, charger. <laughs> it wasn't that bad. My husband, the forklift <laughs> driver who moonlights as a Christmas cracker joke writer. Well, they've got to come from somewhere. Uh huh. See you later. Love you. <laughs> right, I'm just cleaning this brush off. <clears throat> and I'm going to go in for a slightly tightly, more, more tightly packed brush. Um, I've got a couple of films listed in my description box along with all of my um, discount codes. So, for example, the eyelid primer that I use. I've got a discount code with them. Um, I'm not affiliated with them, I don't earn from it, they've never sent me PR, but that is by far the best eyelid primer I've ever tried. Knocks everything else out of the water, it really does. Um, and this is one of the brushes from AliExpress that I mentioned. This is what they call contour brush number nine. And I'm going to go into Sting, which is the deepest shade in this palette which still isn't really as deep as I would have liked, but let's see, I'm just going to sort of tidy up the circles and just buff that through the crease. 
actually it's got more pigment than I was expecting that's good and this is what I mean if you've got deep set eyes about relaxing your brows and just checking you can see it when your eyes are open I just I don't want to take it up the eye at all I just want to f f fuzzy and soften those edges out a little bit I didn't plug the power in Donut <laughs> Works better if you plug it in babe I know <laughs> And then I'm going to go back into that sting Just to pop a little bit on the outer edge here Of my mobile lid <laughs> I cannot see a damn thing at the moment, so I'm relying very much on muscle memory. There we go. Right. And you can see the, the depth that gives to the eye, because anything that's deeper toned recedes back, and anything lighter comes forward. So if you have the hooded lid and you've had to move your crease up, by putting a deeper colour along that crease, the new crease, it will give it the effect of that part of the eye being further back. It will it'll give you the illusion of having a crease there. Uh, sort of like a trompe l'oeil fooling the eye kind of thing. And it will give you the depth, just to make it look less flat and less obvious. So again, just popping some on that outer corner, just to soften this through there a little bit more. I mean, apart from that keeper shade not blend, uh, not apart from hive not blending out very well initially. So far, this isn't bad. I mean, you could certainly do like a one and done for this for work. You know, choose one of the lighter colours, bung it all over, chuck a bit of mascara on, do your brows, bit of lip gloss, and you, you know, you, you're done basically. Um, I'm just cleaning this brush off again. And then I'm going to grab, this is one of the Jeffrey Morphe collab brushes. It's not one out of the set though, it's one that's sold separately. It's a JS24, which is a lip brush. And the reason I like this is because it gets right down into this corner here. So I'm going to start off by going into the shade Honey. Never go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush. This pigment's got a lot of oils in it, it's almost starting to hard pan the minute you put a brush in it. But you are still able to get pigment up onto the brush. Uh, I'm going to use this Wet n Wild Primer Water just to wet the brush. Now I've got the pigment on it. Um, if you're going to do that, make sure you dry this ferrule off. The easiest way to do it is put it in the crook of your fingers, close your fingers around it and just twist it because you don't want any moisture getting down here and loosening the glue that holds the bristles in place otherwise you're going to be in trouble right I'm going to look down into a little mirror down here so hopefully I can stay on screen and you can see what I'm doing so I'm just going to okay even though I wet that brush there is Pecking fallout from this, I can feel it falling through my lashes. So be super, super careful with that shade, especially if you're a contact lens wearer. Now this side, because I've got such deep creasing here, where this eye was pulled around when I was a kid uh, at the ophthalmic hospital, I do need to stretch the lid out. Right, I need to come out about there with it. Otherwise what happens is the, the pigment 
sort of packs loosely into the crease rather than being blended onto the skin like it is at the moment and then throughout the day as the pigment dries uh, as my eye moves it all sort of cascades down my face through the day which is really unpleasant okay clean the brush off and then which are the two deeper ones do I want to go in with? I think I'm going to go into Queen, although HBIC does really appeal to me. If you don't know what HBIC means, ask me in the comments. So again, I'm packing pigment onto both sides of the brush with the Queen pigment. And now I'm going to wet that with the primer spray. You can use any spray. Um, I'm using primer water. You can use a moisturising spray like Mario Badescu or Fix Plus. You can use a setting spray. You can use a finishing spray. You can even just use plain water. Um, but just never, 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 never go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush because you will kill the pigment. Maybe not the first few times you use it, but you will kill it. Again, hecking fallout with this, even though I did work that brush. But it dusts away quite easily, so that's all right. Okay, let's do this one. So I'm packing the pigment onto the middle third of the eye and then just dragging lightly from the gold across onto the, the sort of greeny gold that I've just put on just to sort of blend where the two colours meet so it's not a harsh line. Okay, I quite like that. Right, my darlings. I am going to pause you while I pop some foundation and some base products on and I will be back to finish this eye look off with you. Now for you sweetie there is going to be absolutely no delay at all, it will be instant. I however are going to have to wait until the next time I press the record button to see you again. So see you right now. Hello, I am back. Okie dokie, I am going to go in with my flat top brush that we discussed earlier and I'm going to go into Sting, which is the deep colour that I've put through here I'm just going to join up with that and run that right the way along my lower lash line I struggle with putting anything in my waterline, my eyes have always been super super sensitive um, and since having fibro they've got worse, it's why I mean I used to wear contact lens all the time in this eye. Um, I struggle to do that now, I struggle to keep a lens in for more than sort of three or four hours whereas I used to have the all day all night sleep in them, so I used to put it in at the beginning of the month, leave it in for 30 days, or 28 days, take it out, give my eye a day's, uh, you know, an overnight break and then put another one straight in the next morning without any problems and did that for years. Um, but since fibre and my eyes are super, super sensitive, I just can't do that anymore. Um, I, ha I do occasionally put some gel liner in my waterline, but it is literally just for photos. And then literally, so 20 minutes later, it's all either run down my face or rubbed off or just, it's not good, folks. Um, I'm actually going to go in with the other end of this naked honey brush because I like it because it's flat topped and it's just a little bit chunky but like the brush that I normally use um, and I'm gonna go in to I think I'm gonna go back into Hive the one that I had the problem with let's see if I can get it to blend out 
you buff out nicely down here. Yeah, okay. Alright, so I think it was just a case of it was struggling on the dry patches on my eyelids because down here it's blending out absolutely fine. Which is good to know. This definitely gives me vibes of the Natasha Denona gold palette without the two deep turquoisey greens that she's got in hers. Um, but I certainly think you could get very similar looks with this palette without having to fork out Natasha's known prices. Like so, let's clean that brush off. I will just pop it back in. Yeah, right. Um, I might actually, I used this Pineapple Sun bronzer today. So I might go in and use the highlighter side of that. This is a lip brush that I bought from eBay years ago. Can I just say, look, how cute is this little pineapple here? Look at this, look, 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 hello. Oh, we're having an inception moment. Pineapple on pineapple on pineapple. <clears throat> As I was saying, this is just a cheap lip brush that I bought from eBay about a decade ago. I'm just going to pop a little bit of that up under my brow. If you had to take the colour right up to your brow, you can still pop a little bit of highlight just under the tail end, just to help lift the brows slightly. And I'm going to go into the inner corner there. And what I like to do with my eye shape is bring it under the tear duct and just gently blend it into the colour that runs under the eye. Because I think, for me anyway, for my eye shape, that just finishes it off nicely. Right, I am going to pause you one final time. While I chuck some more of this highlight on, I'll put some mascara on, choose some lippy of whatever variety, and I'll be back with my final thoughts on this palette. Don't go anywhere, because it's going to be instant again for you. I am back. Obviously I used the same highlighter and the lippy that I went for was a bit of a Fenty Gloss Bomb, the original shade. It's not Fenty Gloss Bomb is it? It's Fenty Glow Gloss Bomb. You all knew what I meant, didn't you? Of course you knew what I meant. Uh, the mascara is the Revolution Blowout Cannabis Sativa Mascara. Love this. It's got a very, very big brush those if you've got small eyes you might find that difficult uh, but there we go so I anti hold it but oh, is this together what do I think um, I'm gonna hold my hands up and admit I was wrong I actually really like this look um, And I wasn't expecting to say that. I genuinely thought that I would be sort of, I had to hold it, but I bought it anyway and I was right. Um, but this is a case of I had to hold it, but uh, I'll put my hands up and admit when I was wrong. I can see myself using this quite a bit, actually. Um, which is probably uh, as surprising to you as it is to me. Uh, what can I say? It. Let me take that brush out before it falls out. Um, the colours were different enough when I started to blend them out. On a, not using this brush though, using a proper blending brush. Honestly, why put a brush in here? I would rather this palette was five quid cheaper and not having this brush in here. And maybe having nice square pans instead of these long skinny pans, which 
are ridiculous if you're trying to get a big fluffy brush into them because you always end up going into the colours like this. Anyway, <sighs> naked pants have always been this design, I'm guessing they always will be. However, um, once I used a proper blending brush on them rather than this little thing, although I do like the semi opaque handle, I think that's very clever. Um, they blended really nicely. I've had a bit of a problem, this shade here, initially blending out on the corners here, but when I tried it on my under eye it was absolutely fine, so it must just be that I've got particularly dry patches there at the moment. Um, I will obviously keep trying this out and I will, you'll probably see it in some tutorials again or I might use it in one of my photo inspirations, but... Um, yeah, I quite like it. Would I pay full price for it though? Still no. But having picked it up second hand from Depop for 20 quid, am I happy with spending 20 quid on it? Yeah, I am actually. So, on that bombshell, uh, if you are a member of the 4F family, Please, please double check you are still subscribed. YouTube are unsubscribing people still. And it's bloody frustrating. Um, even if I'm still in your news feed, please double check because there's, there's still a good chance that um, you've been unsubscribed. If, however, this is your first time here, hi, hello, welcome, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I've got a lot of other films if you wanted to check a few more out before deciding whether or not to subscribe. But if you have enjoyed this weird rambling of a half Welsh, half Yorkshire bird who lives with chronic pain and it drives her even more scatty than she was before, and then it would be awesome if you too would join the 4F family by hitting that subscribe button and turning it from red to grey. If you want notifications, I have no idea how many hoops you've got to jump through at the moment. YouTube are constantly changing it because <laughs> gone are the days we could just like a channel and YouTube would tell us when they uploaded. That'd be far too helpful. Anywho. All that remains for me to say as ever. Thanks for defrosting that precise moment, Fridge. Is you'll stay far. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now. What was that I just did with my hand? See you next time.